Hello and welcome back to Outer Wilds, having uncovered this subterranean cavern in Timber Hearth. We have a lot to think about and a lot of quests to pursue. We're going to head back to our ship now uh, and see which uh, sort of prehistoric project we want to perhaps um, go after. And, uh, and we've got, what, a project in Brittle Hollow in the southern, uh, the South Pole, right? There's also one that was referenced about the, uh, the Ash Twin. Owl. Tree. Ghost matter detected nearby. Oh, you can, uh, equip scout launcher, yeah. Because it can, it's photo, uh, yeah, ghost matter is right here. So I, I want to go around it, right? Like like so. And keep an eye on it. Is that it? Okay. I'm not sure what the significance of that is other than an environmental hazard. But anyway, yeah, so like the uh the ash the ash uh twin has something on it. Come on, let me up here. And then, of course, I also want to follow up on this big tree. Actually, but since we're here, let's see if we can figure out where exactly this big tree is. Uh, and then... Come on, get up there. And then maybe we can um, understand... It seemed to indicate that there was perhaps something inside it, which would not surprise me at all. Alright, we made it up alive and relatively unscathed. Well, minorly scathed, but that's an occupational hazard. Okay. I wonder if we can patch ourselves up. I just noticed now that there's like a little red figure in the middle there, which I suspect means our health status. Uh, yeah, medkit. There we go. Back to full. Love it. So, we should go and figure out where the, where is the biggest tree on the planet that is being referred to. Uh, probably in the village, right? I mean, obviously there's a, there's a lot of places to go, so we're not just going to look for the tree, but... Now, okay, hang on. I need to look at something. Um, is there a way to rotate? Move x-axis, y-axis. Cool axis. Roll mode. Oh, okay. You click R in flight. Okay, that's not quite what I meant to do. But, that works. Uh, I do want to check out this little, uh... Icy area here. The geyser area. Okay. That's cool. Anything up here? Ooh, can I go inside? Is that possible? It's possible. Feels a little ominous. Uh oh! Wow, okay. You know what? We'll try again if we can. Now, I wonder if this is on a timer. So it's like we want to go down there. But we have to wait until the geyser goes off again. And then maybe that's like our opportunity to to go in. So we're going to wait one more time for it to shoot off. And then 
soon as it stops. We may even use some thrusters to go down. Okay, go, 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 go. We're going to reach terminal velocity here. Whoa. Now, what have we here? Hello. Whoa. Turn the flashlight on. Sure enough, that did take us somewhere. Where? Where are we? Let's go in here. I think. This is going to pull us in, I think. Whoa! Look at that. No, 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 no. Not what I wanted to do. Oh, that's the platform that we were in, uh, that we had seen before, right? Oh, ouch. Vital's low. Yeah. I need to get better at my jet jetpacking. Alright, let's go down here again. Okay. Can I get my translator out thing out? After closer observation, mining site 2A wouldn't be safe for the native life dwelling in some of this cave's pools. So, unfortunately, we'll have to mine in one of the other sites. Got it. And that's presumably our our ancestors, right? There are a few other cave sites that look promising. What about Site 2B? It shares similar formations and strata. This sounds promising. Will you and your mentor investigate? If mining Site 2B provides a proof safe for this native species, we'll move our work there. Man, they're very considerate to the ecosystem, aren't they? Site 2B is safe. Coley says we'll continue to monitor our activity and its effect on life here. On the opposite hand, new life. This species is semi-aquatic and very hardy. The ecosystem here is quite robust, so I believe they'll thrive in the long run. Be cautious near the pools if you visit 2A to meet them. I was watching once during a rest, and the hours escaped from me. They're fascinating. I wonder what their fourth eye does. I'll never tell. They remind me of a subterranean species that my mentor, Melore, once told me about, from when our clan used to travel across this universe. I imagine she would have enjoyed these life forms greatly. So I don't know. At first, I was like, "Oh, they're they're kind of they're kind of uh, ominous." Oh, look, and there's us, back in the day, and that's them. That's good. Good to know that that's actually what they look like, and that's the heads that we've saw in the little ash, the, the twin ash projection weirdness. Um, yeah. At first, I thought that they seemed kind of ominous. You know, and mysterious, and like obviously the whole mind melding thing was was weird. But if they're speaking fondly of us, right, of us protecting us as a species, then how evil could they be? You know, can't go there anymore. But I can go up here. Uh, okay, let's go up. Wow, we are quite high up. Hopefully, gravity will do what it needs to. Uh-oh. Vital's critical. Okay, we should probably go back to the ship, which is where? Oh, it's quite far. Feels like it's on the other side of... <laughs> the other side of the uh, planet. Well... We can get there a little quicker if we kind of go semi-orbital. Oh yeah, we really went through the middle, didn't we? Actually, you know what? While we're here, maybe we go. Maybe we go check this little this little uh, area out. There's a lot of broken trees, as if something has crashed here. Oh, right! They said that they were going to send a... They were going to send somebody in here to go check this out, right? Ow.
Okay, well, that was my own fault. <laughs> I pushed it a little bit too much. It's interesting that it retains the HUD on there. Uh, but I guess that's my suit's HUD. It's not the HUD for me, the player. So I, I guess that makes sense. But I would say that was pretty productive. That was a pretty productive life. I wonder, should we check in with Slate every time? See what direction it's going in. It's going in that way, that one, that time. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, there's not much new to say. Uh, I'm I'm hungry. Let's have a marshmallow while we're at it. There we go. Delicious. You know, marshmallows are the key to our species survival. I don't know if you knew that. It's one of the five essential food groups. Marshmallows, s'mores, hot chocolate. Two others that I shan't be mentioning. Uh, let's check our ship log. Uh, as well. So the Know My Mines mentioned the Ash Twin project. The Nomai Mind Ore from this site to craft a protective shell designed to physically seal off the central chamber, chamber inside Ash Twin. Once the shell was finished, the Nomai checked to ensure there were no longer any physical entrances or cracks. The Nomai discovered a species of four-eyed semi-aquatic life forms in the waterways near the mine. The central chamber inside Ash Twin was physically sealed off by an immensely thick protective shell. Cool. So, why don't we go ahead and, you know, this time we'll just go directly in here, I would say. Uh, oops, we didn't, we didn't get close enough. Uh, so it says roll. Oh, there we go. That's how we do it. Got it. Okay. Let's go this way. Let's see, can we actually land in the crater? Wouldn't that be nice? Perhaps not. Let's just get a bit closer and then we'll engage uh, the landing camera. Actually, I might not even need it sometimes. Like, this is a pretty generous landing area. Sick. Oh, look at this. There's a nice little- oh, that actually hurt. I didn't realize I was that sensitive. Alright. Can I- can I roll down this? Or slide down this? Or just walk, you know. Alright, looks like there's somebody down there already. Let's just explore a little bit while we're up here anyway. Now there's another branch that seems like it leads somewhere here. Maybe we should go check this out. Oh, maybe not. Huh? We'll see. Oh, I fell off it. There's a lot of fallen trees. It could just be environmental destruction caused by... Whatever this is. Oh, this is another ice crystal uh, manifestation, right? So it came from, what was it called? The Dark Bramble was what it was uh, referenced before. Alright, this is Tektite. Oh, we've seen him referenced before. Hey, yo, Hatchling. Thought you were taking that tin can of yours into space today. What are you still doing here? Me? I saw something crash over the horizon and didn't like what I was seeing in the pictures my little scout was sending back. So I thought I'd come over here myself and take a look. And, yeah, Dark Bramble, right? You think so? It's nothing I've ever seen on Timber Hearth before. So you're probably onto something there. Whatever it is, 
It put down roots in a hurry. I don't like the look of this thing, Hatchling, and that's a fact. I think I'll set Marl and Hal loose on it. Best get rid of this mess sooner uh, rather than later. And no one can remove an unwanted plant faster than a tree keeper can. I'll have to get a look at what's inside the seed first, though. Don't want to set anybody to hacking up a potentially dangerous plant without a better idea of what's lurking inside there. Tuff can help me haul the old scout launcher over here. Obviously, the opening is too small for someone to fit inside, and anyway, I'm not going to blindly stick my hands into anything that looks as unpleasant as that seed does. That's a good way to lose an arm or two. So, you want me to send a scout launcher in there, right? Okay. Uh, sure. Whoa. It's bigger on the inside. Also, error. Duplicate sim uh, signal. What does that mean? Whoa, what? Rotate camera. How do I do that? Oh, one, two, three, four. What is that? It's like a, a fish, like an angler fish of some kind. What do you think about this? Blasted seed did a lot of damage when it crashed. I like this crater. Uh, I threw a little scout into the seed. You did, did you? And you're telling me it's bigger on the inside than on the outside? Huh, this is going to be a chore to chop up and no mistake. Can we even remove a seed that doesn't have the decency to say, stay the same size all the way through? Maybe I'd better grab an axe or three just in case. Okay, well, now what? Duplicate signal, what does that mean? I mean, I have my signal scope. Oh! That's what you mean. That's, um... What was his name? Uh, Feldspar, right? The guy on the moon said that he had heard something... Heard the harmonica coming from here. Now, what do you have to say about that? My signal scope is picking up a harmonica inside the seed. Inside the seed, huh? Don't know what to tell you there. The only harmonica player I know is Feldspar, and they disappeared ages ago. Listen here, don't go telling nice about the harmonica music, okay? They'll never let me get rid of this darn seed if they suspect it has any musical talent. So... What do I do now? Can I go inside to, inside it as well? I mean, that seems like a really bad idea. Um... I don't know what to do now. Let's... I guess let's go back to the ship real quick. Oh, I've got to I've got to go up here, up the, uh, up the fallen tree. Let's go and check the quest log. I wish there was a way for me to do that here, uh, just where I'm at. Because I can already check the map, but I would like to also be able to check my my quests and quest progress. Wow, Scout, 19.3 kilometers away. We are for sure not 19.3 kilometers. Duplicate signal. Oh, I get it, because it's coming from here. And it's coming from there. What is there? Uh, maybe we should go up and take a quick look. After we check the log, that is. So, dark bramble seed, inside the seed, so, a seed from the dark bramble has crashed, but yada yada, my signal scope picks up harmonica uh, music, I launched my little scout into the seed, it's bigger on the inside, when I launch my scout into the seed that crashed on Timber Hearth, it ends up in a much bigger space filled with fog and thorny vines. Yeah, but now what? So there's the dark bramble. Now that, so yeah, I guess the dark bramble originated inside the planet. And then 
exploded the planet from the inside, causing these ice chunks to fall in different places. And I suppose a seed from that bramble as well. It's kind of like a virus, isn't it? It's like it's trying to find a way to survive. Like even the way it's portrayed here, like with the little the little head with the tails, which is often, uh, you know, which it is in fact how viruses kind of propagate. They kind of wedge their, the head into the host and, and try to uh, survive symbiotically and then also inject its own DNA. Very kind of off-putting. And that is, in fact, where the duplicate signal is, I can see from my uh, corner of the screen. Okay. So, with that being said, maybe we go check out this uh, little outpost right here. Oops. Just want to unbuckle and go check it out. Unidentified signal nearby. Another one? Unidentified frequency. Oh. What kind of signal is that? Can I cycle? Oh, I can cycle through the frequencies. Huh. Okay. Hello. Anybody here? Closed due to fire damage. The old radio tower, while an important landmark, is unfortunately closed thanks to the unsanctioned flight testing of an extremely powerful model rocket. While we hope to repair the radio tower in the near future, all construction efforts are currently focused on the planned museum expansion at the observatory. Sincerest apologies, except to Slade and Micah Hornfels, museum curator. Oh, is this more DLC stuff? Seems like it might be. Seems like it might be. Okay. Uh, oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Light the campfire. Huh. You know what? Um, I'm glad. I'm glad to have a bonfire. So this is where I spawn from now, right? Now that I've unlocked a bonfire and I can level up here. delicious. One more. I'm actually quite fond of marshmallows in real life, so this actually is a nice vibe for me. Charting stars again out by the radio tower. They're so bright out here. I only wish I were able to record them faster. Admittedly, I could use more patience. I get so engrossed in my work that sunrise becomes an unwelcome deadline and daylight a grating slog. Someday I'll have to study the mechanics of how time manages to turn uh, slow to a syrupy crawl whenever I'm anticipating something. In the meantime, I've turned to Gabro, our resident expert in leisurely whiling away the hours, who recommends the following. Gabro's three foolproof steps for dozing off. 1. Light a nice cozy campfire and get comfortable. 2. Gaze deeply into the serene warmth. 3. Let time begin to slip away as you allow the flames to lull you into a peaceful slumber. If Gabbro knew I'd taken notes, they'd probably think I'd finally cracked. But I refuse to accept sass from an astronaut who deliberately burns their marshmallows. Yeah, lightly toasted is the way to go. If anything. Uh, new soft and fresh marshmallows. Jumbo size. They make them in a can now? How do you like that? Well, oh, doze off. I mean, sure. So what happens when I doze? Oh, I can wake up whenever I want. Okay. Does that heal me? What is the... Why, why would I need to, to sleep? What does that do for me? Okay. Well, good, I guess. I don't know what mechanical value that's that gives me, but it's a you know again it's a nice vibe. All right, a lot to find on our home planet, isn't there? 
So there's there's that bonfire now, so we'll have access to that in the future, I suppose. Uh, I don't know, maybe there's going to be a mechanic that will need us to kind of pass the time in some kind of way. Okay. Now that looks like something worth checking out. Uh, this one that I saw? No, where, where was the... There was a big tree that I saw somewhere that I wanted to look at. Sometimes after I land, I get a little spatially disoriented. Let's let's go up here and try that again. Now that's weird. Is that a is that a known planet or is that like a what is that? That's like a I don't know something. Bad. I have, I have a definitive feeling there's a lot of celestial bodies that we're going to be... that are not charted, that we're going to have to go um, look at. Alright, where is that... Uh, tree I wanted to go look at? Uh, there it is, over there. Okay. So let's roll around. Hold R. There we go. Get a bit closer. There we go. All right, hey, I'm I'm getting a little better at these these here landings. All right, so the tree. This is this has got to be the tree that people are talking about, right? It seems to be like one of the biggest ones that exist uh, on this planet. Certainly got an interesting platform though. Chert's research notes. Property of Chert. I've detected a strange signal coming from somewhere in, within the grove in this crater. It's very similar to the signal emitted by the quantum moon, so it stands to reason the two signals are probably related. We don't know much about the quantum moon, seeing as no one's ever been able to land on it. What is the quantum moon? But hopefully studying the signal in the grove will reveal more about it. There's a, s a signal coming from inside the grove, he says. Huh. Uh, we should probably switch frequencies if we can, right? Perhaps we can't even? It said coming from inside the grove, right? Within the grove in this crater. Huh. Okay. Oh, down here in the, uh, underground, huh? But usually a grove, to me, means like a grove of trees, right? Oh, there's trees in the, in the crater. Okay. 
Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh Whoa. It's like choral music of some kind. Whoa. Quantum fluctuations. Grove shard. Whoa. In the ancient glade, the quiet shade. Across old bark, it's always dark. Now, what happens if I line up, line these up? Is that, is that something that is significant? Or is there only wait? There's only one shard. And this is weird and trippy. really kicking in too. Grove Shard. Huh. Okay. Well, we have a ship log update, right, to that effect. I'm not sure what to do with this. So I guess that's it for now, right? Across old bark, in the ancient glade, it's always dark, the quiet shade. Oh, there's two different poems, sort of like opposing poems. Wait. Oh, it's one of those things, like, each time you look at it, it jumps around. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Across old bark, it's always dark, the quiet shade in the ancient glade. Okay, so you look away and got to look at the next one. Uh-oh. What's happening? What did I do? Hello? Whoa. Is it a meteor shower? Huh. Um. Interesting. So, was what happened up there related to what I found here? Or... You see, I'm kind of wondering if we're on some sort of timer. Like, it's not an explicit timer, but it's- I feel like it might be a- it might be a timer nonetheless. Huh. Because, like, the first time we- or the second time we died, it was like, under a- a water- the waterfall. And it seemed like I died for no apparent reason, and here, I certainly died for no apparent reason because I was just looking at the- the signs. So, I mean, if, if with this being a time loop, that kind of makes sense that there's a definitive endpoint that we have to comp accomplish our objectives by, or we die by from whatever that is. It kind of looked like a meteor shower of some kind. I couldn't quite tell what was going up. Pre-fight checklist. Oh, jetpack auto boost. Jetpack boost can be tri triggered with a separate button, manual press. Or any time upward thrust is used. Let's do auto, I think. Freeze time while translating. Oh, freeze time. That's why you would want to freeze time. Because if you're on a timer before you, you die. Yeah, freeze. Freeze all time, I suppose, right? I want to make as much, as much progress as possible. Alright, the quantum grove. The quantum moon. Can I select this? Come on. Oh, there we go. 
There's a strange rock in this grove that moves when I'm not watching. It emits a signal on the quantum fluctuation's frequency. Chart's research notes mention a quantum moon that has no that no Harthian has been able to land on. Oh, got it, because it's a moon that, like, if you look at it... Oh, and you can mark your... Oh, that's so nice. You can mark the, the quest HUD on your, um... The quest marker on your HUD. That's actually super nice. Uh, so as I was saying, it's like a... I suppose that means, like, it's a moon that if you look at it, it changes position. Just like the the rocks from which it, uh... That come from it, right? Should we go... Should we go look at it one more time? I just want to look at this one more time and see if there's anything significant here. Alright, we're in the thick of it now. So not only does the sign move, the rock itself moves. An ancient glade across the bark. Oh, that updated the ship log. An ancient glade across old bark. It's always dark. So this is this is the ancient glade that we're in. Across old bark, so across from an old tree. It's always dark. The quiet shade. Okay. Now which way does it go? rock here. And what does the sign say? An ancient... Oh, it it changes the order. In the, in the ancient glade, the quiet shade, it's always dark across old bark. Do I need to get them in a particular order? Because it seems like it changes position. So I need to stay looking at this until I can find where the sign is and then go read the sign. I don't know where... The ship's probably blocking where it is, if I had to guess. So I need to read it. I need to read the sign. Oh, there it is. Well, maybe, maybe th that's a fact that I've already discovered. And it's in my ship log somewhere. Okay. Let's go let's go check the ship log. I feel like we've done about everything there is to do here. I need, I need somebody to somebody to tell me what it means. <laughs> oh man. I found a poem written on one of the trees in the grove. Yo, okay, yeah, I did. So, and I don't know what it means. But we will remember that it's here. Maybe it'll become like a password or something that we'll have to remember later on. All right, what else is there to see on this little world of ours? We've seen those ruins. We've seen that tower with the bonfire. We've we've we been in there before. What is this? Is this the village that we come from? Oh no, that's the that's the crashed ship. We've been inside the geysers. Um, that's, okay, hang on. Is this where we just went into? Yeah, it is. And this is where we found the quantum grove. Okay. So that, I feel like that's everything. I feel like we've been pretty thorough. 
right? Unless there's something else here in the village that we have not yet seen that we would want to go uh, check out. I'm just looking for a big tree because they keep they keep saying something to the effect of like there's a really big tree, the biggest tree you'll ever see. Oh, here it is. Uh Yeah, we should we should see if we can figure out anything about it. Hello everybody. Oh, it's where a museum is. Interesting. So... What's going on then? So the biggest tree in, in our village is this... Well, it's, it's, our, it's our launch platform, right? Huh. Okay. I don't know what to make of that. Also, can we get back up here now? Oh, not quite. All right, we're going to have to wait for our booster to recharge. Ugh, okay. This might take a second. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Well, okay then. Um, I guess we are good now. Why don't we go to... Um, let's let's stay in orbit real quick while I go look at the at the ship map. Hourglass, Timber Hearth, Owl Rock, Brittle Hollow. Yeah, let's go to Brittle Hollow. Whoa! What just happened? Oh, I... I was irresponsible with my gravitation... <laughs> my awareness of the gravitational pull. Well, that's cool. Um... But that's fine. Just a minor setback. Why don't... Why don't we go ahead and head to Brittle Hollow in that case? I feel like that's... That's the next big thing. Now, see, it has... It is changing direction. Now it's going that way. Is it like a clock? Is it like three o'clock versus like nine o'clock? Is it something that we can maybe chase down with our ship? Because it's like, it's showing us definitively like what direction whatever that thing is, is going. So if we take off. Oh, we didn't... Why, why aren't we taking off? Okay. We finally escaped the gravitational pull. Um, so, it shot this way. Whatever it is. Is this it? Is this whatever was shot? Alright, we're gonna go for a look. Engage. Maximum thrust. All power to shields. Man, this is so nice. I'm glad that I, that I saw that autopilot. I can't imagine navigating towards that without having an autopilot uh, available to me. Force per or uh, depth perception is kind of difficult to ascertain. Okay, let's get closer. Oh, it's very small. It's very small. 
So we're going to go in slowly. And what kind of satellite are you? Going a bit closer. Why is my my uh, flashlight not working? Oh. Oh, is it a it's a telescope of some kind, right? Is a signal coming from it? Hang on. Change frequencies. Whoa. Well, those are the quantum fluctuations. So th those are a new set of things that we need to go find. Oh, cool. We're getting a lot of them lined up at the same time. Wow, look at all that. Now, I wonder if that that's possibly that's no accident, right? Um, no, I want to I want to stay close to this. I want to I want to look where it's looking. Now, where exactly is it looking? Oh, did the camera just point to look at me? Or no, I guess I hit it, huh? We got them all lined up pretty nicely, I must say. Anyway, okay. Sorry, I was getting a little caught up in the moment trying to make the get the band back together. Now, what exactly do I do with this? Now that I, I mean, it looks very slapdash, doesn't it? it? Look like it looks like Harthian technology, and it also looks like there's writing on there. What it, uh, what does that say? Error map offline. Is that something I can repair? Whatever this is. You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do um, match velocity. Let's unbuckle. Let's get our spacesuit on. Let's go out there. Uh, match velocity. Let's go towards it careful, real careful, like. Unidentified signal nearby. Is it from this? Ooh, deep space satellite. Frequencies discovered deep space radio. Which, which means what? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Why did, why did I do that? Yeah, let's put, let's put this away. It's being more disruptive than helpful at this point. Uh, alright. Map offline. What if I use my little computery hacking skills? Outer Wilds Ventures. So why did something from Outer Wilds Ventures fire here? And is there anything I can do to fix this? Caution. What about this little little hatch here? Can I do anything with that? I can't, I'm struggling to kind of get up on top.
There we go. And there's there's a bunch of uh, scratch marks on it, tally marks. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that the number of times that I've died, or is that unrelated? Wild. Okay, uh, you know what? This feels like a very atmospheric place to to pause, perhaps. I don't know what it is with this satellite. It feels kind of ominous, though, that it came from Outer Wilds Ventures. Has tally marks on it. And what purpose is it for? I am not certain. Why don't we go in our ship? And, uh... Now we have the, the deep space radio, or whatever. I don't think we got a new quest update for that, did we? No, we didn't. Very weird. Let's go ahead and unselect the quantum uh, marker, and I think we'll just call it here. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I've got questions, certainly. If we need to come back and give this thing another look, we certainly will, but I feel like it's just giving us an opportunity to look for more uh, weird uh, deep space signals, which we certainly will be doing. And then on to Brittle Hollow. Um, yeah, really fun, really atmospheric, lots of mystery, and a lot of natural beauty, which is amazing to see. I'll see you next time.